Hi, Barbie. Oh, hi, Alan. There are no multiples of Alan. He's just Alan. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused about that. Alan comes off as very unassuming. I think he's more of the introvert of the show, and there's only one of them, so it makes it more difficult. But I think that at the end of this video, you are gonna have so much more appreciation for Alan and everything that Alan brings to the table. Because even though he is more quiet and reserved, I think that in a lot of ways, Alan is one of the heroes of this story. Alan is more introverted, he's quiet and reserved, but he doesn't have social anxiety. He's able to dance, he dances to his own drum, he doesn't have to follow everyone else, and he just enjoys himself. I think that Alan isn't always noticed because he's more quiet. The difference between social anxiety and introversion and extroversion. So social anxiety means that you want to do more, but your fear of judgment is gonna hold you back, so you're not gonna do it. Versus introversion, meaning that hanging around with people all the time actually causes you to lose energy. You feel drained, not because you feel worried or you feel fear or you're fearing that you're gonna be judged for something, but because that's not really your natural state. You don't feel like always talking, always chatting, having to be always on. So hanging out with a whole bunch of people, you actually feel a little bit more exhausted and you might even need to take a break. And extroverts gain energy from being around people. They feed off of the energy in the room. They're also much more loud, much more gregarious. They want to be the center of attention and they enjoy it. So in this world, there's all these Kens and Barbies that are really super extroverts. They don't mind dressing up, doing dance parties, having everyone be seen, being looked at, trying out different things. He doesn't have to stand out. He's the introvert among a whole group of extroverts, which can be so exhausting for Alan, but I think that that's one of the things that's so endearing about Alan. He doesn't have to always be loud or be flashy or yell to be able to be noticed. He can support and care and be there, but no, no, no. He isn't just always this unassuming person. He has some amazing traits that I don't think that many people noticed on the first pass, and I think that we should go into them. Great cheer, Kens. And the wonderful thing about people that are more introverted is that they share something it's usually it's it's often that genuine thought that support that they can be there to be able to help others to be able to be a part of something and that they enjoy that but again at a much more low-key level even when he's saying great job Kent he's not having to yell it out some of the things that Alan probably deals with though is that feeling of perhaps not being noticed not being recognized for his strength that sometimes in this group he comes off as as invisible and because he isn't as loud or as outspoken or as abrupt at the way that he presents things that people might overlook him or they might not even notice what he says or what he's doing. Often extroverts look towards other extroverts. It's just part of the nature that we see the things that are more loud or more gregarious. And so sometimes it's the person that might be soft-spoken that may have the words of wisdom that if we had listened to it, perhaps many of the things that happened in the story or in our lives may not have happened. And so it's important to make sure that we listen to even the softer voices in the room. What are you doing? You're a doctor. I like being a helpful decoration. And Alan likes to help me give all the Ken's foot massages. No, I don't. I don't like that. We love it. See, like, Alan didn't even get sucked into the cognitive dissonance. He did it because everyone else was doing it, so he felt that amount of social pressure, but he was able to voice that he didn't like it. Just no one really seemed to pay attention or care. And that's what happens sometimes when we're more soft-spoken in front of other extroverts, that sometimes the amount of extroverts kind of steamroll over us and it's as if what we said didn't really happen or didn't really matter because no doubt he has voiced his opinion and no one really cared that he didn't really want to be able to do it. And sometimes then it's hard because it makes you question yourself that if everyone else is doing it, I'm just going to go along with the herd. Who are you? I'm Alan. Oh, you are, Alan. That's great. Don't tell the Kens. I'm trying to escape. I cannot sit on one more leather couch. It's going to break my spirit. Now he really has his voice. He's reached his limit. He's 
try to abide by the rules of the world. And he's like, you know what? I am completely done with this. And since I can't see a way to be able to make concrete change, I'm going to leave the situation, which is the appropriate thing to have to do if other people are constantly opposing their wills on you. But it's a really hard thing, especially when you're part of an ecosphere that you've never seen something else to be able to leave. I think that often people are like, just leave a situation that's dangerous or damaging or toxic or abusive. It's so much easier to say that when you're on the outside versus when you're on the inside. A lot of the times your feelings of empowerment have been taken from you with your self-esteem or your feelings of self-determination might be much lower and so you sometimes really need to work on looking within yourself to be able to do things to get things prepared to be able to make concrete change as soon as they figure out how to build that wall sideways and not just up no one is going to be able to get in or out alan already knows what's happening he understands that there's now going to become a wall built that's going to keep people in Barbie land, Ken land, inside, and that they're not going to be able to get out. But I love that he's also thought that, yeah, they just don't know how to build outwards yet, but he sees it. He has an intelligence, this quiet intelligence, this quiet support, this thoughtfulness about him that I don't think that anyone's really given him the full credit for. And that kind of upsets me for Alan. Is Alan really just the smartest Barbie in the area? Like, I'm just saying, hmm. Maybe. Maybe if they had asked Alan ways of doing things, he might have found a way to do things better. Possibly. So if we want to leave, we better make a run for it. No, Alan, you can't go. Having a Barbie in the real world is what caused all these problems in the first place. Not one person would care if Alan was in the real world. I think that we need more Alans in the real world. He's unique. He's one of a kind. And though he might not be the flashiest or the loudest, sometimes it's those quiet traits that we need more of. Thoughtful people that actually care, that actually think about things instead of just doing things first. In fact, it's happened before. All of NSYNC, Alan, yes, even him. So come on. Hey, you there. What, what do we do? Just get in the car and keep it singing. Alan, unassuming, everyone doesn't really notice him. But when push comes to shove. Hey, man, be ready for anything. Who are you? I'm Alan. I'm, uh, I'm Ken's buddy. Yeah, all his clothes fit me. <laughs> <laughs> To, to protect everyone. He also, he punched first. Like, you know, handshot first. Alan punched first. He didn't even wait. He was there to protect them to make sure that they could get away. What happened when Ken was in the situation with Barbie, who he absolutely loves, was being attacked? What do I do? Do I follow Barbie into that scary unmarked black truck car? A truck car I'd like to have, actually. You're right. She's fine. He thought about the car and himself and how dangerous it was. But who fights and protects? Alan does. How many people does he fight? Get in the car. He's throwing down. He's doing his judo throws. The one that's actually the fighter out of all of them. And he's not fighting like all the Kens did, which was kind of like faux fighting and kind of more dancing and it's theatrical. No, he's fighting to win. So all of the people that say, oh, Alan, he's actually the weak counterpart. He's actually someone that is only a friend. No, he's actually a beast. You just didn't know it because he was introverted, because he was quiet spoken. You should always speak softly, but carry a big stick. That's what Alan does. When it came push to shove, Alan was able to push back. He like, you should see him fight. When you see him fight and then you see the Kens fighting, you'll be like, who are the ones in the leather and they're all fluffy and they're like, kind of like, you know, woohoo. And they've got like the streamers and stuff, which I don't know, was really entertaining. But like Alan was really fighting. This wasn't pretend. He was fighting to be able to protect someone and he could. He doesn't even question it. He went out right away. He saw danger before it came because he's able to have that foresight. He understands what it's like being around all of these extroverted people that often are more bravado than they are actually bite. But for Alan, he had a lot of bite and I think more bite than probably most people gave him credit for. <laughs> What are you doing? You gotta go. But you don't. You've always believed in what she could be. I love in the background you see Alan like he just totally like just headbutts someone in the background. He's like making all of these burly construction workers like really regret that they came to work today and they questioned him. Even if, it, even if you can't make it perfect, you can make it better. I can't make anything better. I'm the one who ruined Barbie land with my stupid drawings in the first They're place. They're not stupid. They're amazing. 
Like, all I'm thinking about while this entire conversation is I want to see Alan fighting more. And, you know, you shouldn't fight. You only fight if you need to, if you have to, to protect yourself. He isn't fighting out of ego. He isn't fighting because someone insulted him. When we talk about being in control, being able to take care of things, those higher order things that are not from a weak ego, Alan is actually quite securely attached. He's taken the brunt of always been everyone's joke, but he still has a really secure sense of self. He can handle things really well. What he was doing is just making sure that they didn't cause any problems so that his friends could be able to get away, and himself included. And no one was going to be able to stop them. And I love that when Alan went up towards them, like, which is already such a strong, bold move, you know that he believed in himself, that everyone else kind of flinched. So I love that, and I think that that really shows who Alan truly is. We have to get out of here right now! Shut up, Alan! We're going back! Let's go! should have shown a touch more appreciation. He just fought, put his own life, risk body on the line. I think that maybe a thank you, Alan. Thank you, like awesome, but we're gonna go back. Let's take back Barbie Land. That's the only thing is that they didn't really notice all of the things that Alan does. And because he's so kind, in this case, I would say too kind. He also doesn't push back like, hey, maybe a thank you would have been nice, which would have been completely appropriate to do. Yeah, I was really pissed this time. I wasn't when I watched it in the movie, but now I was really, really angry to be able to see it. So I'm just gonna play it again for myself. You have to get out of here right now. Shut up, Alan, we're going back. Yeah, not okay. Let's go get my doll. I'll never get out of here. I know the distress of him having to go back, but also I think it was a little bit of not being seen again, not being appreciated for what he just put on the line. Mm, upsets me. You have to make them believe that you're complacent, that they have the power. And when their guard is down, you take the power back. I also love that Alan is a team player. He is there, he is your backup. He's going to do the things that need to get done. Here he is, he's dressed all in pink, he has the glasses. Like, he enjoys being a part of the team. And it's so important. We often talk about being the leader, being the star, trying to, you know, reach your potential. But we need to have team members to be able to make things happen. People that you can actually rely on, people that you can trust. And I think that often we forget how important those values are. Because if you're a leader, but you don't understand how important it is or what it's like to follow, how good of a leader can you actually be? And for humans especially, our power, our strength has always been in our ability to work as a group. This now, you oh, sit oh, oh, what's happening? Alan, go around. Ah. He can be a real boss about things. He can really take care of things. Here he is not being able to like get over the fence and not really sure what to do and he still follows it. And sometimes that's the thing is that people that you may not even know that you expect understands everything that always feels cool under pressure, that sometimes we still have all of these different insecurities, these things that we don't believe about ourselves. Like I just watched Alan do all kinds of like kicks. I think that one was like a jumping, flying sidekick. Not sure, but he can't get over the fence. No, Alan, you can definitely get over the fence. You just need to believe that you can. What we see inside of ourselves is not accurate. Alan could definitely get over this fence. He could leap over this fence. He could beat someone down, headbutt them, and jump over the fence probably at the same time. But if you don't believe in yourself, then you're going to be placing a fence between you and the goals that you want to achieve. So remember to reflect on what you've done and appreciate yourself. I'm so happy. I love that. I love when people can genuinely celebrate someone else's victory or someone else's success, that there's no spite or jealousy in them. So unappreciated people that really are happy for you. Like, you know, so many people that when you have a victory, you have a success, you're doing well, they're happy for you, but underneath that, they're actually spiteful or jealous or resentful of that. I wish ill upon you, perhaps even. But for Alan, you can tell he's really happy that Barbie's got back Barbie land. He's not even thinking about what will he get in this. He's just happy for their win. And those kind of people are really very rare and very precious. To be that authentic is difficult to do because you have to kind of take away your own ego needs to be able to do that, to be able to truly give to someone else, to give that compliment or to be really happy for their part of the journey.
for those that say, well, is he betraying the other Kens to be able to do this? Well, he strongly believes that they haven't listened to him, as he said in the car, that he doesn't feel that they hear his voice, that he doesn't feel accepted by the other Kens. So for him, his area is more to be with the other Barbies. That's where he's more aligned, where he feels more happy and secure because the other Kens didn't treat him well. They didn't recognize him. They didn't notice him. I would say that probably the other Barbies, though, didn't fully notice or recognize him either. But that's why I'm kind of happy and hopeful that Alan will start to see his own light and make his own path. <laughs> Don't look at me! Is he crying? Just give us a minute. And you can see from that look on Alan that he's also a super feeler. He feels like crying because he sees Ken crying, that he sees him upset. And there's some people that lean towards being more empathic with their feelings, that when someone else is hurt, they also feel that pain. Having that skill of being a super feeler can also be really difficult because sometimes you become too absorbent. You absorb other people's feelings and sometimes because of that, you forget about your own feelings and your needs in the process. So sometimes you might be doing things to make other people happy, but you're not thinking about how it will make you feel in return. So you also want to watch that and watch what you are around because if you're around a lot of sadness, you might inadvertently absorb that sadness also and carry it with you. No Barbie or Ken should be living in the shadows. Or Alan. Yeah, I love, I love that he spoke up for himself right then and there when, again, he was going to be forgotten, that he remembered to speak for himself. And I think that that's what we need to do, that if we need something, if we want something, we should ask for it. Let people know what we're hoping for, because often if we don't say it and then someone doesn't deliver that, we might feel resentment for them. But is that really fair? Our job is to learn to be able to let other people know, to be able to ask for what we need. So so that they can do it to teach people how to treat us. You don't have to find a book to learn about the patriarchy or any other subject that you want with today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Just learn any new skill, get yourself prepared for whatever life has to throw at you. You can enjoy to learn with Brilliant's ever-growing set of new courses. Brilliant makes college-level courses available to everyone. Yes, even those Ken, Barbies, and Allens of the world. Each course is designed for high velocity learning to help you stay focused and reach your goals exceptionally fast. And Brilliant makes learning like a game with fun features that let you challenge yourself and compete with others. So it never gets boring. And you know that when learning is fun and enjoyable, the knowledge sticks better. So you'll learn more easily and more quickly. And Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational to advanced math, data science, neural networks, and many more. I've covered so many of their different courses Courses from algebra, logic, geometry, and I found all of them really engaging. I did their course on logic. It had challenging problem solving exercises where I get to construct critical thinking skills that are the basics of mathematical reasoning. But if you're scared of math, you don't have to worry. It's in small, enjoyable chunks and it's visual. So if you're a visual or hands-on learner, you'll find that the pace and the way that you look at things makes learning so much easier. They also have courses on how technology works and thinking in code. So if you're still not sure, why don't you just try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Just visit brilliant.org slash Georgia Dow or click on the link in the description. The first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click on that button, head on over to brilliant.org slash Georgia Dow. Clicking on that button really does help out this channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. So this is my video on Alan. You can let me know your Alan thoughts. It was a requested video. So hopefully you enjoy it. You can let me know in the comments below.